to say the color purple because not only it, it makes you feel so many different emotions, right? And the book is amazing. I, I know I can't recommend that book too, but the book is great. But um, the movie is phenomenal, and I think it's important to watch the performances and the stories of Black women during a time that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, I, I feel like when it comes to Black women's experience, sometimes we get caught in between the hoochie and slavery. <laughs> and there ain't no in-between. It's like either you're a video vixen or you Harry Harriet Tubman. You know what I mean? So I think that it's, it's a nice story to tell that even in freedom, there were still a lot of fights happening um, on behalf of uh, Black women's soul and freedom and friendship. And, and it talks about queer relationships. It just, it touches on so much stuff that a lot of people don't, you can't get it. You can't get all the things that you get out of the color purple in one movie from a lot of movies. I say that. That's all I'm saying. It's good. It's a good movie. Get your tissues. Um, get you a support friend and watch the color purple. Um, the joy of children laughing. It is true, the makings of you. Hello, beautiful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's your host, Drake, or be Drake with Everything Culture, the podcast for all cultures, the podcast with a purpose. And we are back with another Makings of You. And once again, this morning, this evening, this afternoon, well, we have the pleasure of welcoming Zoreen. How are we doing, Zoreen? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. It took some time to wrangle you in, but we're yeah. here now. We're here it's now. Hard. You know, it's hard to wrangle Uchi. You know, you can't, you gotta, you gotta work together. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. And it takes time. <laughs> you out there handling business, doing the thing, yeah. you know. You mm-hmm. got big things coming, right? I do. Okay. I do. And we love it, love it, but... This is the makings of you. So this would be the makings of Zareen. This is when we bring guests on our show. We get to know a little bit more about them, about their background, their upbringing, their childhood, their views on life and perspectives. So later when you come on the show or any of the conversations or things you may want to share with people that know mm-hmm. more about you, this is a great opportunity and a great resource to have. So once again, thank you for being with us and being transparent with us, but looking forward to a good time. I'm looking forward to it too. And just for clarification, I do go by Zoreen. Um, my full name is Zoreen Truly. So I do go by my that's that's not a stage name. That that's my my government. Um okay. Okay. Yeah. We're getting it real. That's what I'm talking it's about. Real. Right now. I like it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people know me by, you know, Crybaby yeah. Thug. Yes, but, yes, yes, yes. So uh well, you know, I'm Drake. That's the last name. I give you the other government later. Because it, it ain't about me. It's about you. It ain't about okay. you. Okay, yeah, you got it. It's about right. Zareen, okay? <laughs> okay. So, so, you ready for your first question? I'm ready. Okay. So, Zareen, how would you describe yourself? <sighs> well, um, I would say that I'm pretty multifaceted. I would say that to try to, even if you ask other people, I don't know if they can necessarily put into just a few words uh, the type of person I am or what my personality is like. But if if I tried to, and if I had to, I would say that I'm outgoing. Um, I'm a Gemini. I'm a hard worker. Um, I'm a Southern girl. I'm originally from Memphis. So I have like um, I've been in and, and I've been in California for seven years. So I have a little bit of the West Coast in me and a whole lot of Southern roots. Um, So I would say, depending on who you're talking to, you'll get a different answer. But if you ask me, I think that calling myself multifaceted is the only way to describe myself because I'm a different person every day. Mm. Every every day. I be feeling the same way. You can't just put me in a box. Yeah, like, I feel like 
people say, you know, you feel different every day. I mean, it's hour to hour with me, honestly. Like every, <laughs> and that might be the gym not part of me too, but um, yeah, I would describe myself as like super easygoing and fun and caring and all those good things. But I change, I change every day. One day I, I might love you to death and the next day I I know how y'all operate. <laughs> I know how y'all operate. Right. So right. you was speaking earlier, but Zareen, how did you get your name? Okay, so I'm actually named after both of my uh, grandmothers. Um, my grandmother Zareen, and the last name is just, it just so happens that um, I was born with a star's name. Uh, my brother's name is rest in peace to my brother Darius ever truly and I'm Zorin truly and we just got lucky we got lucky like that we was born with with stage names <laughs> you know like really built for the stage so my mom I do so Zorin is actually my middle name and my first name is I'm not I'm not gonna say what my first name is that's unnecessary but um I'm named after two really important people on both sides of my family. So that's where my name comes from. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Doreen, what cultures do you represent? Ooh, I think I represent many cultures. So I would say that um, I represent the Memphis culture. I, I represent the Hoochie culture. I, I represent the culture of Black women and the nuanced culture of being queer. And I represent the culture of survivors. Um, it's so many things that I feel like play into um, the cultural impact that has brought me to where I am right now. And so I would say, yeah, I made up of a lot of things, but it's a whole lot of Memphis. A whole lot of Memphis. It's a whole lot of Memphis. And yeah, we love this South Sea of Aaliyah, you know? You know, <laughs> you know well, it's a whole lot of North Memphis in there. Oh, okay. We both Southerners right here. And, you know, being part of Southern culture, this is always a question I struggle with, but it's for the show. Do you mind sharing your age with us? No, I, I don't mind sharing my age. I am actually 36. Um, yeah, it's Gemini season. I'll be 37 um, June 19th. So I'm a June I'm a Juneteenth baby, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Star. My favorite holiday, you know. Oh, I guess I'm getting a Juneteenth episode too. <laughs> Mine too, yeah. That's what I'm saying. The day The day I was born, come on. I couldn't be nothing but free. Uh, you should put that on the shirt. We were talking about I that. Really like, did, right? I really uh, yeah, that, that, that's live. That's that's live right there. I <laughs> love it. I love it. So, Zareen, how would you describe your childhood and your upbringing? Ooh, um, I would describe my childhood as adventure. <laughs> I um and I would say my my childhood, I had an incredible duality uh, because I was raised in North Memphis, which is a, a rough part of Memphis. You know, uh, Three Six Mafia and Yo Gotti, all them people. Them that that's what they was rapping about. Um, so I would say I I've had a duality. So I was raised um, by my mom most of the time uh majority of the time um i my dad suffered with addiction so dealt with a lot of that um in the household i um i lived in the hood i went to school in the hood when i was in elementary school but then my mom worked really hard so i could go to a catholic school so i went to catholic school for four years of my life i'm sorry three years of my life and then we ultimately could not afford it anymore. 
So my senior year, I ended up like going to my neighborhood school. So it was like my life has been a constant, um, not battle, but uh, filled with changes, right? Like being able to be around people who live in mansions, but at the same time, I come back to my house and I don't have my own room. I'm sleeping on the couch, you know, or... Uh, going to a Catholic school and their parents are doctors and lawyers and I'm spending the night at their houses and then I come back and, you know, there was a shooting three houses down. So it made me sometimes envious, but it also gave me drive because I knew that I wanted the, I wanted the drive that the people I saw around me in North Memphis had, I wanted to pioneer things and be creative like them, but I also wanted the stability that I saw on the other side. So my childhood was filled with good and bad. And I also came up um, being one of two children that my parents had and my brother made my life amazing. Like my brother made my life amazing. We would we would do Dev Comedy Jam in the living room. You're right. Like we would do stand up. Like it, my upbringing is what really cultivated my love of art and my love of performance and my appreciation for black women and black people and the people around me. So, yeah. Love it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. You hitting all the questions. That's what we like. You and I appreciate what's that and that comes from knowing yourself and transparency. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. For, you, you feel like you feel comfortable. So we value that right there. Yeah, so, I'm t- you make me it's it this is a good good energy. Good, 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 good. good. It's reciprocated. Um what was your first sense of responsibility? What was my first sense of responsibility? Like your first feel. Like, well, first you knew I'm responsible for this. <sighs> okay. That made me, why does that make me think about Hustle and Flow? Have you seen Hustle and Flow? Where she's like, I'm in charge. <laughs> hey, 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 it's real. <laughs> I went to the theater. He put the baby on the porch. Everybody had to go, okay? Everybody had to go. Hey, that's um, hard. Somebody needs it. Easy. Um, my first sense of responsibility. Okay, I would say my first real taste of responsibility for real, for real, is I want to say when I initially went off to college. Mm-hmm. Um, because I had never been away from home like that for a long period of time. And this was my first go around in college. My first go around in college, I was there for two and a half, almost three years. And then I dropped out. But when I first got there, I had to understand that I really was responsible for myself. Good, bad, indifferent. If I wanted to pass a class, I would actually have to get up and go. And it wasn't your mama tapping on the shoulder saying, it's seven o'clock, you need to get It was like every decision that I made directly affected me. And that was the first time I think I realized that, and I still didn't have a full grasp of it, right? Um, That the things that I did could really affect the outcome of my life. That was that was the first time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was out there acting up, baby. You ain't the only one. You wasn't the only one. I was out there, <laughs> I was out there acting up. That's almost the American dream right there. Mm-hmm. Mm, thank you, thank you. So what was your first taxable job? My first taxable job. My first, ta- okay, my first taxable job was Target. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. Shout out to Target. Yeah. 
what was the what would what was the pay? What was your salary? Wow, that was now you really aging me. Um, I think it was seven dollars. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was like seven dollars. And then you know it's Tennessee, so they was paying us in dust. It was like seven dollars an hour. I believe I was like in the tenth grade. Um, you were getting broke off. Of what? It's the makings. Right. It's the makings, right? <laughs> it's the makings. So yeah, I, I was getting paid seven dollars and some change. Yeah, that was my that was my first job. Respect it. Mm-hmm. And I still love Tarjay to this day. Shout out to Tarjay. Let me tell you, I was at Eckers and I was getting paid five fifteen. Then I was, mm-hmm. I was like, "Where was you at?" I'm from East Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're like minimum wage still under eight dollars in Texas. So I'm like, which is we, it's crazy. And that's a whole conversation. We go come down. Yeah, we can't even touch that because that that's a that's a whole hour conversation. And and we 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 talk about those things here but not today because we're talking about you to make exactly. it you know? exactly we, we come back to it so how are you disciplined growing up you know what i was and still am a very sensitive person so i did not get with it mm. um i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't disciplined that way because of I, I'm a sensitive person, so all my mom had to do was literally raise her voice or be disappointed with me or, you know, maybe give me the cold shoulder for a couple of hours, and I was literally distraught. Um, also, that stems from, you know, growing up a people pleaser. So it also worked on my parents' behalf because I wanted to please them and I wanted them to be happy with me and not upset with me. Um, but it, it didn't stop me from acting bad. Inevitable. I was acting bad. I was acting bad. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really, I wasn't, by the time I came around, uh, me and my brother were six years apart so by the time i came around my parents was like we ain't finna be with her like she a cry baby like she she will be weeping for years over this so um i got lucky where i wasn't physically disciplined like and when i think about it i wasn't really disciplined and thank you for your responses that's true Oh, don't get me started with my situation. Yeah, because don't. I, 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 didn't, I didn't get a lot of whoopings, but I used to say I'd rather get a whooping than hear somebody nag. Like I used to tell them, like, whoop me to shut up. Talking. Get- but I was different. I was <laughs> different. Please, whoop me, like, please. God, hey, I'm still talking about this. I'm like, well, I'm different. I was, my mouth, my thing was my mouth. That's my thing. Yeah, I had a Scorpio mom, which I mean, I still have a Scorpio mom, but um, she had a way of making you feel it. Without even being physical, mm-hmm. but you know, mm-hmm. hence the name, you know, Cry Baby Thug. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. I'm, yeah. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm yep. learning. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay, okay, that's right. My next question What were and what are your beliefs? Hmm. As far as what? Open any question. Oh, that's that's real open. What are my beliefs? Um, I believe that everybody has the right to be happy. Um, I believe that everybody deserves the opportunity um, to grow, to change. Um, I believe that if you put the work in, you can do anything. Um, I believe that your ancestors are always going to protect and guide you. Um, I believe that Hoochies are the pioneers for popular culture, fashion, beauty, and sexuality. Um, yeah. I believe that HoochieCon is going to be a sold out event. It is. <laughs> okay, I believe I believe that. I believe that. We love that. We love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, who has been the biggest influence in your life? 
I think um, one of the biggest influences for me has always and will always be my brother. Um, he just put me on to so many things that without him, I don't think that I would have the confidence to pursue the things that I'm pursuing in my life. Um, I started off as a spoken word artist. Uh, yeah, I do poetry. I do spoken word. I, I originally started doing spoken word poetry as AZ Truly. Um, those are my initials. And um, it was because of him, because he used to do poetry. And he took me to my first um, open mic. Um, and then when he passed, I kind of carried on that legacy and continued with spoken word. I used to host open mics. Um, he also was pursuing acting. Uh, so we had a lot of shared interest and he was one of the first people I saw go out there and pursue things regardless of what some, anybody thought. If people, you know, he came out of North Memphis, moved to Atlanta and then moved to Los Angeles and then bat an eye and, 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 and wasn't afraid. Um, so I would say he's one of my biggest influences because um, he taught me to carpe diem, seize the day always do things that make you scared because a lot of times on the other side of that fear is everything that you wanted so I would say Darius truly is my biggest influence love that Ooh, you're like the third person in the past 24 hours to give say that and I like playing it well no I can't say I was like playing to say but there's some things that I got to step out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And I'm going to say the same thing I said with other folks. I needed to hear that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe you're hearing it over and over again for a reason. And sometimes um, when the universe or when your higher power, whatever you believe, your ancestors, whoever, when they know that you need that message, it's just going to keep coming. <laughs> It's just so kicked up. It's not going to go nowhere, you know? I'll so be trying to, like, not today, Lord, but hey, hey. <laughs> listen, yeah, I be listen. The same I know. Way. I be the same way. I'm like, please, I know. But. Yeah, it's I'm growing. Come, we coming to it. We coming to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is like a little bit of a three-parter, but could you recommend a book, a movie, and a television series for our audience? Yeah. Um what book would the, what book would I recommend that everybody read? Now, that's a hard one. Um I would recommend that everybody read um A Rose from Concrete Book of Poetry by Tupac Shakur. Um if you're not into chapter books or novels or anything like that, I think it's an easy read, but it's also very powerful. I think sometimes we get caught up in having to have a whole lot of rhetoric to feel like we're really reading something or we're really getting something out of a book. It's simplistic and it's powerful. So I would say book would be A Rose from Concrete, A Book of Poems by Tupac Shakur. Um, and you said a movie? That's so hard. I love movies so much. That's so hard. Uh, but I would say a movie that I would recommend. Should it be something new or should it be just like This is your episode. You you say what you want to say and how you feel what people need to watch. I would say if okay. If, if I had to recommend a movie right now, just off the top, I'm going to say The Color Purple. Um, I'm going to say The Color Purple because not only, it, it makes you feel so many different emotions, right? And the book is amazing. I, I know I can't recommend that book too, but the book is great. But um, the movie is phenomenal. And I think it's important to watch the performances and the stories of Black women during a time that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, I, I feel like when it comes to Black women's experience, 
sometimes we get caught in between the hoochie them and slavery. <laughs> it ain't no in between. It's like either you're a video vixen or you Harriet Tubman. You know what I mean? So I think that it's it's a nice story to tell that even in freedom, there were still a lot of fights happening um, on behalf of uh, Black women's soul and freedom and friendship. And, and it talks about queer relationships. It's just, it touches on so much stuff that a lot of people don't you can't get it. You can't get all the things that you get out of the color purple in one movie from a lot of movies. I'll say that. That's all I'm saying. It's good. It's a good movie. Get your tissues. Um, get you a support friend and watch color purple. Um, TV shows. Um, go back and watch the Wayans brothers. Go back and watch the Wayne Brothers because it's so lighthearted with also having moments that are touching and the it's something about the nostalgic quality of watching the Wayne's Brothers because it was like in the 90s and you know they just regular black dudes, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like very motivational and pops. I mean. Rest in peace, John with a spoon. Yes. Like, you can never get enough of him. So, yeah, watch the Wayne's Brothers. I like to pretend like I'm still in the 90s. So, yeah, go watch that. Was it Concrete? Um, and a Rose. Roses. A, a, a Rose, Rose from Concrete. A Rose from Concrete by Tupac. A Book of Poems by Tupac Shakur. Um, the Color, the color Purple. purple. How, we, hey, we'll come back to that. Yeah, and okay. The we'll Wayne's Brothers. It. And the Wayne's Brothers. To all my listeners, my viewers, my supporters, the people who really rock with everything, because Drake, me, moi, I may just let you know I'm about to talk right here. I may not even include this in the episode because this is the makings of Zoreen. <laughs> okay. Do you do you know who you're talking to right here? Who like, do you know? To? Do you know how much I love the color purple? Do you know, that's, 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 I'm talking about. You said oh three hours later. You got to get to the stage play. Okay, I'm that that's that's on my to do list. You got to get to the stage play. I was actually a t- assistant director for The Color Purple when it was in Memphis, and you know I do a little acting. I have a degree in performance and African American studies. Shut up. Um. So yeah, we listen. It's I I get it honest. I love the color purple. Wow, oh, this ain't nothing but God right here. This is this is, this is, <laughs> this is right. okay. Yeah, you know we gotta, do, we gotta do a movie night where we just talk about it. It's it. That's y'all. We gonna take a quick break because y'all ain't gonna hear. It, but we just let know we gonna come back with a quick break with y'all real quick. Y'all have been flooding my inbox asking for inspo for hoochie con. A lot of people say, I don't know what to wear. I don't know how I should have my hair. What makes the outfit hoochie? Say no mo, I'm here for you. And if you never heard of hoochie con, pause this video, look at the information. The first night is June 16th from 7 to 10 p.m. Five dollar donation for the opening night. Now let's get into how to give hoochie and hoochie con. The first and the most easiest thing you can do to give the girls hoochie down to hoochie con is think about your nails. It doesn't have to be any intricate, expensive nail shop to do your nails. Babe, get you some press-ons. Get some curved red nails or even the French tips. Maybe a little design that you put on yourself. Most importantly, it has to be something that you like, okay? That's what you want to want. Now, wearing something vintage will always put you in the hoochie mindset. Take me <laughs> at ThriftCon this weekend. This outfit is completely hoochie. I got the vintage. It's a black thing t-shirt, some leggings, denim, and a cute little lip. It's giving hoochie, babe. Pull something out of your closet that you already have. You better put a t-shirt, tie it up, get some leggings, throw a denim jacket, and frou-frou your hair and come down to hoochie con. Please make sure you got your door knockers. It is so important for the outfit. They come in all shapes and sizes. And again, it's what you like. If you don't know where to get them from, go to Amazon, put in door knockers. They're going to be at your door. Now, if you live where I think you might live, go down to the beauty supply, get you a few for $1.99, put them things on, and come to Ojagon. 
And there is another theme here, red. It's always gonna give sexy. It's always gonna give vintage. It's always gonna give hoochie. Look at them stars in the back. That red split, babe, you can get that outfit at Forever 21. Spaghetti straps, tube tops, put it on. Take me for instance. I took all of my own advice. You see the red nails, the gold accessories, put a little flare with a vintage jacket and some denim shorts, and I'm eating the girls up. So I don't want to make this video too long. This is part one of fashion inspiration for HoochieCon. Stay tuned. The girls said that they wanted nails, hair, and outfits. So let's just say this is part one of what you can wear to HoochieCon. Okay. So y'all, welcome back. <laughs> to the makers of Zareen. We've been talking for the past 20 minutes, but y'all can't hear that. Nan, nana, boo boo. So the thing is, we go go right back into learning more about our awesome guests and, you know, them. So, Zareen, you ready for the next question? I'm ready. If you had a magic phone, and with this phone, you can call anyone, anybody, anything, fictional, real, here, gone, whatever. And they have to have a conversation with you too, as long as you want to talk to them. Oh my God, please. I'm already weeping. I will call my brother. I will go ahead, dial up whatever galaxy he hanging out at, and I will call him and just talk about everything. I will ask questions. I will want to know what he's like on the other side. Um, what kind of powers he didn't gain? Like, <laughs> like I would, I would definitely use that that call to to talk to my brother. Wow, for sure. Love it, love it. You got two more. Oh, I got two. Oh, got I got three. Oh, I got three. Okay, so the second call, if it could be. Anybody? Okay, so the second call. Okay, the second call would be to my grandmother, mm. who I never met. She passed before I was born. And I would want to know about my family history from her perspective. Because I think it's really cool that, you know, you know, they say that like your grandmother has like technically has you inside of them before you were born. Like, so she's been connected to me before I was even born. And without her, there would be no there, there would be no family as I know it. Um, and then everything that gets lost in translation when you're going through different decades in the family, right? You know, Uncle Pete, uh, so and so, blah, blah. I want to know the business, <laughs> okay? I want to know the real. Um, I would say my third phone call would be. Let me go and call. I'm gonna call God. Hmm. I'm gonna call God. Like get, get him on a horn. Um, him, them, they, whomever. And I would ask all the questions that everybody is always debating about. Like, what's the meaning of life? Um, what does my future look like? Um, am I on the right? Like all these things that you like rhetorically ask into the universe or that you pray about or that you ask for guidance for. If I get the per if I get the person making the, the moves on the phone, do you know how priceless that would be? Like if you just on the phone with God, like, hey, what's up? Um, I know you created everything and everyone. How you doing? How you feeling? Okay. Um, da -da -da -da. That I'm getting out on the horn. I rock I'm with even, it. I might even call in a favor. <laughs> uh, hey, it's y'all conversation. It's the, it's the way you doing your phone. You doing your phone. <laughs> right. It's my phone calls. I'm like, you know, my kiki for a little bit, but then I'm like, you know, I hate to ask you. 
<laughs> All right, folks. But, uh, so yeah, it would be um, my grandmother, my brother, and God. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, okay. Who has been? No, I take that. What has been an impactful moment in your life? So many. I think one important moment in my life, which there, there's there been a lot, I think moving from my hometown was one of the most impactful moments in my life. Um, I think that once I graduated college, I, had, I was in a relationship for a long time. I was engaged. I was about to go down this path of southern woman culture where you get married you add a baby and you you got your degree and that type of thing and nothing against that I just don't believe that that was the path that I was actually supposed to be on even if it felt comfortable um so I think moving um pushed me to really pursue my dreams um there was no holding nothing holding me back um and I think moving made me realize that I really am in control of my destiny um I could stay I could stay in Memphis and create a destiny there too but when you by yourself away from all the comforts of your home I think that's when you really start to understand yourself you know like um i forget who the quote is from it's like i didn't leave the south to forget about it i left the south to understand it and so i think that's that's really i really resonate with that i left to understand myself i I left to understand where i came from um because sometimes when you're in it you can't really see outside of it. So, yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> that, that That's a lie right there. Who, you, you don't know who that quote is from? <sighs> it's no straight. Uh, we we got to Google it. Yeah, we can Google it. We can come back to it later. But it's... when I said that hit me like here. Yeah. Um, I'm up here in Seattle, and I'm like, if I didn't leave Texas, I've been like, I, I, I was just how'd you have this conversation today? It was like, you man, about what? I'm like, I had a conversation a minute ago. I'll be telling people when you leave, like, especially during this whole pandemic situation. I'm like, hey, you know, some things we doing ain't the best decisions. And if you if you from Texas, you know, we stubborn, like as as hell. Like, Richard Wright, Richard Wright. Richard Wright. Okay, I definitely mm-hmm. I'm definitely gonna put that up soon. But yeah. it's like, you know, it's it's the late great Chad um Pimp C Butler has said a fight go with that, you know. Let's and, go. <laughs> Let's go. Man, and it, sometimes a fight shouldn't come with it. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like but mm-hmm. here in Lee, but that's what we do here. It's like until I left my hometown, moved to Houston, mm-hmm. I started looking at things differently. Until yeah. I left my home state and move to Washington, I can start looking at things differently. Yeah. And, but it's always bringing back what you've learned and what you've grown and to mm-hmm. build your people. Mm-hmm. But exactly. We, we ain't here for all that. We here, but, but, but Zareen is making it happen, y'all. So mm-hmm. thank you, Zareen. We pre- How you feeling? I feel good. I feel great. Love it, love it. What's your thing song? And I love music too. You really? Wow. What's my theme song? Okay, can I can I tell you something? I really love sad music. Hmm. Like I think that most people, because I'm super into hoochie culture, I think I I have to. I gotta have two answers. Okay, um, yeah, you can have I a have playlist to. if you want. It's your show. It's your. It's okay, your time. okay. I got a few. 
So I think one of my theme songs is Where Them Dollars At, Gangsta Boo. <laughs> That's Rest, so in, Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace to Gangsta Boo. Uh, I would say, yeah, that's that that song is a, is a motivator, and you know, if you know, you know, she just ain't talking about money. Um, I would say another theme song for me would be You really, you really did it with this one. You really did it with this one. Cause that's a, that's a hard one because I love so many. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Miles Davis, um, Blue and Green. That I was, yeah, if you listen to that, I feel like it really, like, resonates with, like, my energy and the crybaby thug in me. So, that would be one. And the third one would be... Oh, that's hard. That is so hard. It would be uh, George Benson, Broadway. They say the neon lights are bright. On Broadway. So you can so you can hold a tone. You got you can hold a tune. You gotta stop that before you get this copyright hit. You know, like we got oh, that I'm was playing, like I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah, so I would say it's a mix. And then oh, I need a baker rapture. Like it's so much. Like I grew up on Anita Baker. I love, love, love Luther Van Dross. Um, that song "Bad Boy." Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah, that one. I love that song, and it, it's just it's some it's some feel good about that, where it's just like it's just that's my happy song. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just no, good. I ain't gonna mess up the lyrics, but I know, like my mother loved Luther Vandross. So Luke, Luke, my mom loved Luther too. Luther. She so used to have her friends over there that'd be drinking, listening to Luther Vandross, honey. Just, he was everybody's favorite. And that's a whole nother conversation because he deserves so much more than what we got. So. Right. That's another conversation we'll have for That is. That is. We'll have and another. We will get into it. Okay. Okay. You got a plethora. All right. All right. All right. That next question. How would you define joy? How would I define joy? I would say joy is being able to do what you love. Whatever that is and however that looks. I think that's joy. Love that, love that, love that. If you can have any artist talent, who would, what would be the artist? Who who would be the artist, and what talent would it be? If I could have any artist talent, what would be the talent, and who would it be? I would take from. Denzel Washington the ability to take control of a room um I would take from Tupac the ability to be fearless um I would take from and you said anybody Mm-hmm. Or stars. Hey, I said artists. You know, it'd be somebody you know personally. Oh man, I would take from Halle Berry the ability to be vulnerable. I take Angela Bassett's versatility. 
And I would take Richard Pryor's comedic time. Mm. Yeah. I'd be bad <laughs> with all of that. Man. I said I would like from Angela Bassett, I would take her discipline. Just let me tell you. Yeah, she she is really, really disciplined. She really is. She yeah, really, I, really is. I've done a lot of research on her, and it's like a lot of people say they want it. Not as bad as she does. Let me say that. She wanted bad, and, and that's what, when you're going after the things that you love, that's what separates everybody. It ain't talent, because there's a lot of people who are more talented than other people who ain't in the same position. It's the drive, and it's the work. So that, that's that, exactly. Love it. Love who was the last person standing? Mm. Mm. What privileges do you benefit from? <laughs> What privileges do I benefit from? Um, I I think I got the hoochie privilege, um, which is the ability to be free. Mm. Going back to like Suge Avery, that that's a that's a privilege to be able to believe in yourself and honor yourself in a way that everybody can see. Um, I also I have the privilege of having a big booty you know like a lot of people <laughs> a natural big booty um that's a privilege because and, and i say that jokingly but at the same time people are literally dying to have it's crazy people are literally dying to have thighs and booty so that listen if, if i don't wake up every day and thank the lord and thank my mom thank you um I also um, benefit from being able-bodied. You know, that's that's a privilege. I, I benefit from uh, being educated. That's a privilege. Being able to speak, to see, um, to have discernment. Those are all privileges. So, and I'm appreciative. I am. So I, I benefit a lot from my blessings. I do. Love it, love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In what areas in your life do you need to heal? Hmm. <sighs> um. I need to heal from. I need to heal from people pleasing. Um. I need to heal from. I think that's the root of of a lot of the things that I need to heal from. Um, I'm still healing from the loss of my brother. I'm still healing from the pandemic. (laughs) I'm still healing from, you know, growing up in the South. I'm still healing from, you know, the human experience. So, you know, I ain't the only one, but there's a lot of healing that I feel like that I'm still working on, right? I feel like a lot of times people feel like, oh, I'm healing. And it's kind of like, oh, it's 30 days, I'm healed. You know, yeah. it's an everyday, <clears throat> it's an everyday thing. Uh, it's something that you have to work on daily. It's something that sometimes you feel like you healed from something and then feelings start coming up or old habits start coming up. So. I think I'm I'm healing every day from a lot of different things. We appreciate that. Truly do. When did you realize you were different? When did I realize I was different? I think I knew when I was in elementary school. Um, I was different in a lot of ways. Um I remember I used to have teachers who would, and, and I went to an elementary school in North Memphis called Springdale Elementary. We didn't have air conditioner. Um, there was, the neighborhood was real rough and a lot of the kids that went there did not have uh, the same opportunities and nurturing environment that I did have. Um, And I realized I was different because my teachers told me. 
Um, and it wasn't like they're like saying, oh, you are academically amazing. And no, they were like, you're funny. You, you're funny. Um, you're fun or you're, they, my, I had teachers who always complimented me. There was this book called Amazing Grace and the book had a little black girl in it and she, she could do whatever. She would pretend to be a sunflower or she'll pretend to be a train conductor and all this other stuff. And I remember, um, my teacher was reading it to the class and when it was done, she was like, why are you trying to make me cry? <laughs> she was like, um, she was like, you're just like her. You can do anything. Like, you're just like her. And I was like, I, I am. <laughs> like, I realized that people saw things in me that I didn't see in myself yet. And I think that's when I realized, okay, I got a little something. I can make people feel. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing! Wow, shout, shout out to the teachers. Yes, love them. Do you remember the teacher? Do you remember any of their names? Miss <sighs> Borden was one of my teachers. Miss Powell was one of my teachers. Um, I had a principal, Miss Also Brook. Um, a lot of my college professors also helped me realize that I was gifted. I had a uh, um, an acting teacher who I would be late to his class all the time because I'm perpetually late to stuff. It's just, I can't help it, as you know. Um, and <laughs> and uh, he sat me down and he was like, you're amazing. You're, you're, you're so talented. You're, you're one of the most talented students we have here. But you're not Angela Bassett. You're not Meryl Streep. Yet. Come to my class on time. <laughs> like, come to my class on time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he put me in my place, but at the I same time. I was just about to say that. Time, hey. He put me in my place, but in the best way possible. Because I picked up on not yet. I picked up on there's some potential. And so having other people see me in that light made me be able to look at myself. You know, sometimes you need other people to shine that light on you and you can you get a little peek out of the darkness. You're like, okay. I might be able to bring something to the table. So, yeah. Amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, you ready for the next question? Ready. Right, all right. Your biopic is coming up. Oh, I'm so excited. Who would you have play you? It can't be you. So who would you have play you? Who would direct it? What series would it come on? Like, not series. What network would it come on? And what would it be rated? Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay. All right. It's going to be directed by Spike Lee. Um, who's gonna play me? I'm gonna have a young, a young Jack A. Harry. A young Jack A. Harry is gonna play me. Um, it's gonna be rated gonna be rated r nc17 is that what Ooh, okay 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 <laughs> tvma okay okay, <laughs> okay wait what was it what was the other question it was who's gonna play me and like it would it be in the theaters or would it be on a network it's gonna be in the theaters oh, oh, mm -hmm. a limited run <laughs> all right all right all right all right exclusive all right we ain't mad at exclusive. it exclusive Okay, <laughs> that was a good one. You know I gotta get Spike to. Hey, to I, I appreciate this. I appreciate this. I love this. I love this. I love this. So, if you was wealthy beyond beyond all means, 
but you yeah. had to do one thing. You had to have a job, you, but you have enough money to take care of whoever you want to take care of, do whatever you wanted to do. But you had to have a job, a career. You had to do something. What would that something be? Hmm. It would be. It would be acting. Really? It would be acting. It would still. It would still be acting. Um, and it wouldn't necessarily have to be acting in the sense of. Um, there's a script. There's a director. It would be in performance. Period. In front of a camera, doing anything. Okay, anything in entertainment, that's what I would be doing. And if I had all the money in the world, I could fund all of those things. So it would be even sweeter then. I appreciate that. So our next question. This is a would you rather. All right. Okay. So would you rather go back in time and speak to your younger self or would you rather your future self come and talk to you now? I would go talk to my younger self. What age would you go to? I would go to 16. Right. 16 Zorin. Well, 16 Zorin listen to you now? Or back then? Um, if, if I came to talk to 16 Zorin, oh, she gonna listen. Because she going to be like, first of all, what is happening? Why are you here? And like, and I would be like, girl, listen. <laughs> There's so much more beyond what you worried about. There's so much more beyond what you're concerned about. And you're worthy. That's it. You, you're worthy. We would have a long talk about a lot of other stuff that I probably can't say on the back. Hey, hey. You know, who's the makers of Zareen. But, uh... Uh, we roll how you feel comfortable rolling. But, yeah, I would go... Yeah, I would go and talk to 16-year-old Zareen. Because I think being 16, that's... It's the start of a lot. Very pivotal It's moment. a pivotal point in everybody's life. So, if I could go back, I was, like, kind of preparing myself for certain things. Mm-hmm. That's good. good. Okay. How do you relax? Ooh, I meditate. I meditate. Um, I deal with anxiety. Um, so if I'm worked up, I put on some Janelle and Janelle and Aiko. Yeah. Um, she has this uh, song called Calm Down. And it's just like, it really like relaxes me. If I uh, if I want to get real relaxed outside of that, just like kick back. I like to watch uh, trashy reality shows. You know, smoke a little green. Um... Yeah, just kick back and relax. My favorite thing to do is to just, like, chill and be on the couch. Like, I'm a homebody. So, have, you know, a little uncle nearest. <laughs> the... They ain't sponsored us yet, but shout out to Uncle Nearest. <laughs> yes, that's right. Sp- sponsor sponsor everything culture and who'd you call it? Just Straight like that. You know, we here. For okay. the people. For the culture. You did. Okay, okay, I love it, I love it. My favorite question. Okay, if you can have any meal at the snap of your fingers, what would it be and who would prepare it for you? Ooh, that is hard. Um, If I could have any meal, I would have... If I could snap my fingers, have any meal. At any time. At any time. First of all, if I could snap my fingers and have somebody prepare it, it would be Anthony Bourdain. 
and he would make his choice of pasta if I could snap my fingers and have oh, I want oxtails I really I want some oxtails um oh my god so bitch um that's hard because it's like who do I want to prepare them oxtails? Mm. They gone. It's on you. No. <laughs> who would you have prepared some oxtails? I I'm a little cocky, so it's me. Ooh. That's my thing. Like Are I was like sure? you cooking like that? I got some videos up somewhere. I'll be doing the fact. The only thing I have, I don't think I have a master yet is these damn ribs. I can do a brisket like that. Oh, I love brisket. Brisket is my specialty, but I ain't get them ribs be whipping my ass every time. What you be I drying have, them out? Like the most recent one have been dried out. I like, man. The right. one before that was a little bit better. Not the dry but, ribs. I know. That, I, I need to hang up with my white friends. <laughs> they can do some good ribs. You oh, know? They know how to smoke them. I do. I smoke them. That's what I do. And the thing oh, is, maybe, maybe you need to do oven ribs. I may, but dang. I'm a, <laughs> see, I would, that's a, see, see, see. I'm a stubborn. Right I'm stubborn. You, I don't know if you know what I was about to say, but we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. But we ain't talking about me. We talking. Okay. About yeah. Me. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. If I could have any meal prepared by anybody, I would have a full soul food spread prepared by Patty Labelle. Mm. I would have a buttery Italian dish of his choice by Anthony Bourdain. All right. And I would have some biscuits prepared by Martin's mom. <laughs> Not my mama biscuits. Not my mama biscuits. Yeah, you get you getting an A plus with this. Thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> a, a, excellent. Okay, excellent. The, whole, the whole spread. And I actually, I studied abroad in Italy and Paris. And the food was amazing. Amazing. So like that. I guess okay. I would have also, but I can't think of what... Who could be a French? Oh, uh, what's her name? Come on, you know. The, the white lady who loved butter, not Paul Dean. Oh, that was about, to, that was about Martha Dean. Stewart? Julia Childs. Julia Childs, okay. I, I was would about to say Martha. Her prepare her um, one of whatever famous dish that she would prepare. And maybe Emeril Lagasse. It's like, I love food. So this would be all day thing. Okay. Hey, this reason why this, that's why it's my favorite question. Let me stop. Okay, okay. You got about three more questions. Okay. You're doing a great job. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, next question. How do you want people to remember you? <sighs> I want people to remember me as someone uh, who was fearless want to be remembered as someone who was funny and stylish and um, a light. That's how I want to be remembered as, as someone who motivated others to be their authentic selves. Love it. Love it. What changes do you want to see in your culture? I guess it depends on which culture. Um, I think as a society in the American culture, I would, there's a lot of changes that needs to happen. Um, I would like all cultures to respect and embrace uh, Black women more. Yeah. yeah. That I think that's a big change that maybe that might be a little selfish because I am a black woman, but this is your episode. Yeah, I, that, you let that, them let them know. 
Yeah, that would be something that I would love to see a change in. I think it's I think it's I moving. think it's needed. It's needed and it's moving a little bit in the direction of honoring and uplifting, but we still got a whole lot of work to do. A whole lot, a lot. A whole lot. Whole lot of work to do. So I would I would love to see that change, uh, that shift in the culture of how we treat embrace and honor black women last question how can we support you that's easy so what you can do to support me is to number one make sure that you're following me on all my socials uh you can follow me on my tiktok which is crybaby thug 901 um, I go by the same name on Instagram. You can also make sure that you attend the event that I have created and curated called HoochCon, which is <laughs> an ex- a group exhibit um, honoring uh, the pioneers of culture, beauty, fashion, and sexuality. Um and it opens June 16th. That is the opening night for the art exhibit. June 17th, we're gonna have a vendor market and a dance party. And um, the 18th, which is the day before my birthday, Juneteenth, we're having a panel, whereas there's an open discussion about the cultural impact of, uh, of hoochie culture. Yeah, so that's how you can support me. Um, make sure you follow me. Um, if you want to, um, if you're feeling spicy, you can always hit my Cash App. Um, that's Hoochie444 on Cash App. Fo, 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 fo. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's, that's how you can support me. If you feel like you cannot um, attend HoochieCon, tell somebody else about it. Um, share anything you see that I'm posting and that's more than enough. Mm. Zareen, you did it. You've done it. You've completed yes. the makings of you with everything going on. <sighs> Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, see, this would be the time I usually ask if you're trying to be found if the people are looking for you, you're trying to be fine, where can they find you? But you handled that already. You've always been a step above everything Cry else. Baby I want to say that. You Cry done. Baby you... Thug 901. You can't forget the name. Cry Baby Thug 901. Hit me up on TikTok. I do a series called Hoochie History. And it be lit. And it be lit. That's how she got my attention. That's how she got my attention. Because I yeah. know I'm big on history. I'm big on culture and history. And I appreciate people valuing cultures that some people... Ooh, some people mm-hmm. may dismiss it mm-hmm. and don't understand the value. Like, you wouldn't have this if it wasn't for that. Right, exactly. You wouldn't have that. If, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, you know, but you know, I appreciate you having a passion about what you're doing and working, creating something that hasn't been here, you know, and paying homage to people before you, okay? Exactly. Because that, that, that means a lot. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to be chopping it up more and how we can support one another. But first of all, I want to say thank you again. I greatly appreciate your transparency. I love this conversation. Like I love so many others, but you know, this one is like really, you know, you, you once again, like once again, y'all missed a whole lot when we chopped up about the color purple. But yeah, you did. It, it is. And you missed that. He said that I was the best guest. So. Hey, see, 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 she's saying so. She's trying to be like, hey, I love my guests. You know, and I love my supporters. She got to keep coming back because you want to be the best. That's what we're trying to say. You know, I'm definitely coming back. Hey. I'm gonna come back. We could watch a movie. We could uh, break. We could d- break down a, 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 a poem. We could break down well, songs. We could talk about short stories. Like, listen, she knew to this, y'all. She don't. She, she knew to this. She don't know how we really bad it over here. I'm bad like, it too. Come hey, on. We, we one of them podcasts. We don't be on that little messy. They know that saying so we really try to have people grow. That's yeah. the thing. We really yeah. try to have in-depth conversations with one another so we can have process, progress with one another. Mm-hmm. The process, our feelings and emotions and our thoughts and how can we be better people while we're still here and leave a better culture 
a better society for the people behind us. You did. Mm-hmm. So we value you. Thank you, Zareen. We really appreciate you so much. And we want to make sure that you have a great day. Thank great you. event that's coming up. I'm going to make sure to have this out before the event drop. But y'all yes. make sure to support HoochieCon. Make sure to support Crybaby Thug 901 and mm-hmm. all different talk ways. You know, some of the freest ways to support, easiest way to support, just to like, share, and comment. But that's hey, right. I want to say thank you all. Appreciate y'all. God bless. And peace. Thank you. The color purple will forever be relevant and important to the culture, to everything. And I, when I take that.